In this video, we'll be going over pregnancy massage. With pregnancy massage, it can be usually used in the second and third trimester. Some people do not like to give pregnancy massage in the first trimester, or at least until the pregnant woman has seen a doctor. And in this video, we'll go over the different kind of positions that we'll massage a pregnant woman in, also the indications and contraindications also. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, so for this first position, it's called the semi-reclined position. And what we're going to do with this one is, we're going to put three pillows right here. And then we're going to put the fitted sheet over this, like this. So it makes a little bit of a wedge is what it does. So then the pregnant woman, you can help them up on there if the table's too high, of course. And then you can just have them lean back. And then as long as everything's elevated, so especially in the second and third trimester, this is what you want to have them in if they're in the supine position. So again, it's called semi-reclined position. Then also you can put something underneath the ankle, um, right underneath here, right underneath the knees. And another option, so for the inferior vena cava, if you want to raise that up a little bit, you're going to put something underneath here, right underneath the right hip. So only, only underneath the right hip, that's where you're going to raise this area up then, if they ever feel uncomfortable. That's okay, this next position, we're going to go over a sideline position. So for this, we're going to only put one pillow underneath, right here. And with this, you don't even need a pillowcase at all, because it's going to be underneath here. So you're going to have it like this. Then have them just lay on their side. And then you can have them hold on to a pillow too, like this. And then have a pillow between their legs. And if it feels like they're rolling over at all, you can grab a bolster and put it underneath here. So it helps stop it. So as you can see, the whole back, you can access that area. But now what we'll do is I'll show you the other direction. So I'll take these pillows out. So just face that way now. And again, we're going to have them hold on to a pillow. Then have a pillow in between their legs. And again, another pillow or half bolster you can put here. So it's, they're not going to roll over on their stomach this way. So it's helped stop them. So this is another option for sideline position. Okay, next one, we're going to perform the child pose position. So for this one, they're going to get up on their knees and sit right here and then face that way, right in the center of the table though. So it's more comfortable. And then you can have them hold on to a pillow like this, and then have them lift up their glutes a little bit, and they can sit on that area too. So again, it's a little bit more comfortable. And if it's not comfortable for them, you can even put this underneath their ankles. So you need to put this underneath their ankles, so if they're not that flexible, but again, most pregnant women will be flexible enough for this position. And as you can see, the whole back area, you can access it really nice then. But again, make sure they're in the center of the table as much as possible, so it bears the most weight then right there. Okay, for the next position, they're just going to sit on the edge of the table. So they're just going to sit right here, and you can have them hold on to a pillow like this, and you can get into these regions really nice in this position. And if they have any kind of swelling, you can put a, a chair or something underneath their legs to help raise that area up then. So that, again, that's another option. Next position, we're going to have them sit. So have the back over here, and then you just face this way now. And with this, you're going to put some pillows here, and they can just kind of lean over 
so you can access the back this way then. So it makes it really comfortable this way for them. And you can even give them more pillows if they want, but just make sure their belly is not pushing into the table then. And make sure the table, the knobs are on the other side, so they're not pushing in on the knobs of the table. Okay, this next one, it's called a body cushion. This can be used for pregnant women, geriatrics, or even the everyday person too. But with this one, you're gonna have it like this, Then you're going to have the headrest here, like this. And for a pregnant woman, you're just going to expand this a little bit, as you can see here, so they can lay in the prone position. So this is really good in the second trimester, and maybe some of the third trimester. But if it's ever too uncomfortable for them to lay, of course you don't want them to lay in this kind of position then. So go ahead. And then you can put a bolster underneath their ankles too, like that. And with this, typically all these areas are going to be underneath the fitted sheet then. So for dis just for demonstrational purposes, we have it on top of there so you can see what's going on. And then for the headrest, you can have like a pillowcase so it's um, a little bit more sanitary than that way then too. Next position for the sideline, what we're going to do is, as you can see here, there's a gap right here. And they're just going to lay their arm in here. And you can just lay your arm in here. And make sure your shoulder's right in here and then facing that way. You can be right here. And then you can just... There you go. So then just bring the shoulder down here like this. And then... You can have them hold on to a pillow, then also a pillow between the legs, and it's going to be more comfortable for them in the sideline position. And now I'll show you the other direction. And you can see here, make sure the shoulder is right in here, and then they can hold on to a pillow to make it feel more comfortable in this position. And again, you can put a pillow between their legs, like this. And again, if they feel like they're slipping or anything, you can put right in here. So they're not going to roll over that. Next position, it's called a semi-recline position. But again, this will be underneath the fitted sheet. And then what we're going to do is have them lay their body in the semi-reclined position with their head up here and if you need it up a little bit higher even for their head you can have them lift up their head put it like this or you can have it without okay, you can lift up so that's another option or even another option you can have them lift up place like this or you can just roll up a towel to put it underneath their neck too. And then you would want a pillow underneath their ankles and also underneath their knees and just lift up like this. But if they have any kind of swelling, you can have another one like this then. So they feel a little bit more comfortable in this kind of position.
So we'll be starting with the face area and the pec area, and then we'll be going to the arms, and then we'll be going to the abdominal region, and then finishing up on the legs and the feet area. And then we'll have her flip on her side then, and then perform some sideline massage after that then. So let's get started with it then. So with the face, you typically don't need any oil at all. So when you're using um, the face massage, you can just start by just placing your hands on them for a moment. You just really don't want to go into the massage right away to start off with, but just place your hands on them, make sure they feel comfortable with you, and then you can start a little bit with the massage then. And with the massage, again, especially pregnant women, they tend to excrete a little bit more oil, especially in the face region, so you don't need any oil then. And if they do want anything, you can possibly use some lotion then, or jojoba oil. It's more of a paraffin base. So we're going to start by the forehead area. Kind of separate. And most of the times you want to perform techniques at least three times. You can just kind of come up the head area. You can go right underneath here. But if a pregnant woman, if they're feeling a little bit nauseous, that's why being elevated helps out. Don't get too close to the eyes, of course. You kind of go around. In pregnant women, they tend to get a little bit hotter than the average public. So you can offer heating blankets, but more than likely they won't use it. But just have those options available just in case then. And you can even go along the jawline. And every now and then ask permission about the pressure so if you use less pressure or, or if they want more pressure. And it's always a good idea to get a health history of the pregnant woman before you start. Make sure they're not high risk at all. And if they are high risk, make sure you get permission from a doctor before you proceed then any farther. And you can even use both palms even going down, but just try not to cover the ear and hold it all. It's just a weird sensation. You can even go into the scalp region. You can even separate a little bit with like the thumbs. For my wife, when she has a hard time sleeping at night, this is one thing that usually knocks her out. Just massaging your scalp. About 80% of the nervous system runs through the scalp region. That's why it feels so good for most people. And you can even just give a little pull, especially if they have longer hair too. You can even hold on to it a little bit and just give a little pull too. But if they have thinner hair, Try not to use that technique too much because it might hurt them a little bit more. And with the ears, you can even kind of massage around the ears or on the ears. You can kind of friction and even kind of separate the ears too. But right behind the ears, and if you need to, you can kind of rotate the head and really get in there. And this is a big area for headaches. In pregnant women, again, they tend to have a lot more aches and pains than the average public. And if you're performing in a deeper work, make sure you go a little bit slower 
So the deeper, the slower. You can use your knuckles in this area too. You can even glide up the hair a little bit too with the knuckles. And with a pregnant woman, just make sure that they're breathing okay. I mean, they're going to be more upper chest breathing, but just make sure they feel comfortable in this position. And if they need to, you can tell them every now and then that you can move around or move in a different position if you need to. But whatever you perform on one side, just make sure you perform it on the other side too. But for this video, we're not going to even things out as much, so we're just mostly one side. But again, in a real massage, you want to make sure you even things out on both sides equally. You can kind of hook the semicircular ridge here. Just give a little pull. And you can perform some neck stretches too. Make sure you don't cover the ear. Just kind of stretch. And whenever you perform on one side, make sure you perform it on the other side too. And you can perform some like neck flexion, like this and this, and just kind of lift up. And you're pushing down on the shoulders here. But for a pregnant woman, just make sure that they're breathing okay because if they are a little bit larger chested, the milk's starting to flow they can be cut off circulation a little bit when they're breathing. So just be aware of that area then when you're stretching out their neck. I know it feels good, but it might be better just to, just to perform some traction instead. So not the actual neck flexion like this then. And you can perform it both at the same time if you want. Just kind of go down the neck area. And the money maker technique, right here at the shoulders. Most people love this area. Especially women, they tend to have a little bit more problems in the shoulder region compared to males. And with women that carry their purses, and mostly on one shoulder, that's when they're gonna have problems there. Or if you're in a profession where you're on the phone a lot, you're going to have a lot of problems there too because the shoulder is going to be elevated more. And you can even go underneath like this and kind of squeeze. You can kind of rotate and kind of rock the head a little bit. And just don't perform this fast at all. You don't want them to feel dizzy or nauseous at all. And when you're massaging a pregnant woman, it's always a good idea to ask them to go to the bathroom before you start the treatment. Because the farther along they are, more than likely they're going to have to urinate a lot more too. But I myself, I usually schedule at least an hour and a half or maybe even an hour and 15 minutes for an hour massage. So you, the, the client, if they need to, they can get up in the middle of the treatment and use the bathroom then. And when they're in the end of the third trimester, that's when they're more likely going to be urinating a lot more because when the baby starts to drop.
And also with pregnant women too, their shoulders tend to be a little bit more internally rotated, so rotated in like this. So that's why the pec area, concentrate on a little bit more, use your knuckles, And you can even do a little stretch. So you're going to kind of push down to help open up that area then is what you're trying to do. Again, kind of lean in, kind of stretch. And this area might be a little bit tender too, especially at the end of the third trimester. It's going to be a little bit more tender. And in the first trimester, that's why some women know that they're pregnant is their breast area tends to be a lot more tender. So if it's a regular client and they said that it's uncomfortable for them to lay in the prone position, um, you might want to ask them, do you think you might be pregnant at all if it's really discomfort for the breast area? But just be careful how you bring that up, okay? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Always make sure you warm up the oil beforehand. This makes it a little bit easier so you can perform some gliding. So if you're not using the oil, you're, you have to perform more compression techniques. And you can even go underneath the shoulder area even slide underneath a little bit more. And remember with the body cushion there's a little bit of a dip in there so that's why you can get your hands underneath there so much easier. And again some people will use this body cushion for the average public too. So it's not just for a pregnant woman. You can kind of bring it over, kind of glide down Again, kind of glide up, again glide down, and kind of give a little pull, and then rotate it around like that. And after another. But again, in a regular massage treatment, make sure you even out both sides evenly. And it all depends on what they feel comfortable with. If they feel comfortable with a little bit of oil in their hair, it actually feels really good. But it all depends on what they're going to do afterwards. Or if they have access to a shower afterwards too. You can use your knuckles even. Okay, now we're going to go to the arm area. And with the arm area, if they, for some women, for some pregnant women, they might have some swelling in here. For my wife, she didn't have any swelling in her ankles at all. She had swelling in her wrists. And uh, she developed carpal tunnel syndrome just because of it. So that's why I make sure you ask them any kind of problems that they have beforehand so you can be aware of those things. And for my wife, the best treatment that she used was a contrast method. Method So like 5 to 10 minutes of hot and then 5 to 10 minutes of cold. And then kind of alter back and forth then. But it helped defer the nerve endings then so it wasn't as painful then for her. But a couple months after she gave birth, that's when the symptoms started to go away with the carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so now we're going to go up the arm. And for more circulatory types of massage, just kind of glide up with a little bit more pressure and back down with a little bit less. So up and then back down with a little bit less. 
And in general, with the limbs, you want to make sure you go up towards the heart with a little bit more and back away with a little bit less, again, for circulatory. And for pregnant women, you can perform a little bit of stretching in this pec area. So I'm going to come to the side here. And just to make sure you don't expose the breast area, you can just bring this over a little bit, or you can kind of do a little bit of a tuck underneath there then too. And you can kind of stretch out right at the pecs. Or you can kind of stretch, kind of glide down too then. You can concentrate more on the forearms here, you can see. And the hands. And a lot of stuff can be considered just regular massage too. But again, you want to be aware of any, any counterindications. So things that you should not massage or any kind of problems they have. And again, if they are high risk, make sure you get permission from their doctor. And if they are high risk, more likely they have a phone number of their doctor or the hospital they can get in touch with right then and there. So you can ask permission then too. And with the fingers again, you can kind of glide off. But again, look for and see if there's any kind of swelling at all. And the more severe form of swelling, it's called pitting edema. It's when you press in, lift up, and it's still indented. Um, that's the type you don't want to massage there. But there are types of massages called lymphatic drainage. But with lymphatic drainage, you want to make sure there's no other underlying problems too, just to be safe. And with the hands, as you can see here, here, I call it pinky pinky wrap and then spread this area. Or you can even interlock the fingers like this. You kind of stretch out the palm area too. And you can even rock it a little bit too. And if you need to finish an area and go to the other side, you can use like lighter techniques. I call them nerve techniques. It's just a nice transition when you're going to go from one area to the next. Or you can even kind of feather it a little bit too. show you how to drape the chest so we can massage the abdominal region. So with this, we're going to have it like this, you kind of roll it up, drop this whole area, make sure it's not dropped on their head at all, and then you're going to hold this area and this area, and then you're just going to pull it down like this, and then you're going to pull this up like this. And then you can hit, lift up the arms. Okay, so that will expose the abdominal region. Okay, with the abdominal region, you can perform like regular Swedish massage in this area, but again, make sure they're not high risk, and if they are, get permission, and you're not gonna be pushing on the baby, of course. But 
the pregnant woman is going to use a lot more pressure than you're going to use. Believe me, I guarantee it, because sometimes with the baby, it might be kicking up in the ribs, um, they're, and they're going to kind of push it down and stuff. But again, us as massage therapists, we're not going to be performing those kind of techniques. And the majority of the times, the baby is going to actually go to sleep during this time. You'd think it might be awake, but it would actually go asleep the majority of the times when you're massaging the abdominal region. So we're going to start with some clockwise position, like this. Just nice and calming. And sometimes you can feel the outline of the baby. And if you want, you can ask the pregnant woman uh, where the head is. Where's the head at right now? Right down here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can kind of feel the outline of the baby right now, right in this area. So the baby's already dropped. And she has about one more month, and then that's when her due date is. And then this is actually her first, will be her first baby too. And in general, I mean, every single um, pregnancy is going to be different for everybody. But in general, sometimes the first baby tends to go a little bit longer. So they might go longer than the regular time allowed. Then we can even go underneath a little bit, kind of just pull it up a little bit. And sometimes it's a little bit harder on our backs. So we can ask permission if we need to, just put our knee up on the table a little bit to give us a little bit of a break when we're working over a large abdominal region like this then. And right at the diaphragm, right at the xiphoid process right here, a little bit lower, you can just compress a little bit and kind of do a little rocking. Because the problem is with the average pregnant woman, they're not breathing from this area too much. And it's totally understandable just because, again, the baby's pushing up in that region. But when the pregnant woman, when the baby actually drops, it's usually around a month or so before they're ready to give birth, that's when they start breathing better, but that's when they start urinating a lot more. And they typically get a lot more hungry, too, during this time. So the last month or so of the pregnancy, that's when they're, they might gain a little bit more weight, but they're going to be urinating a lot more and they might breathe a little bit better too because again, the baby's gonna drop more so it opens up the diaphragm region then. And you can even perform some breathing techniques with them. Just have them breathe into your hand and then when they breathe out, just compress it just a little bit. You're just reminding them to breathe is what you're trying to do from this region. And when they breathe in through their nose and out through their nose, it's more calming. They're not gonna hyperventilate that way. And sometimes you might be able to feel a pulse in this region, so the inferior vena cava right here. So again, you're not going to be pushing on the pulse region. But if a pregnant woman, if they ever feel uncomfortable at all, sometimes they just need their right hip elevated a little bit. So it offsets the inferior vena cava is what it does then if you put something underneath that right hip a little bit and if you need a little bit extra time in this kind of position then. And you can even do some circular friction right around the colon area. You can use your knuckles a little bit if you need to. And you can put their hand right here and you can go underneath their lower back. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going underneath their lower back and you can use your knuckles in that area and the baby's more floating too in this position and just try not to push up of course in that position. So I'll just go to the other side to just show you what I was doing. So again, you go underneath like this, use your knuckles and with the body cushion Sometimes your hands can slide underneath, they're really easy too. You 
use your knuckles again or just your flat palm. And if you need to stabilize everything, you can just place your hand on the abdominal region and just kind of go underneath there. You can even do a little petrissage and a pinch, but not total pinch, of course. And I'll go back to the other side. Next one, you can kind of just give a little pull. And when their arms are on their diaphragm region like this, it makes it a little bit easier because when you're leaning over, you don't want to be leaning over on their hands, of course. And right on the navel area, you can just kind of do a little rock if you want. But just nice and relaxing, of course. The slower, the better. So if you think you're going too fast, just slow it down. And if you want, you can perform a little bit of Tupolman, but just really light. Again, you can go underneath both and you can just give them a pull up. So again, both of them are going underneath and we're pulling up. And if you want, you can kind of rock it out too. So both of them are kind of rocking out. Or you can go like an ocean wave back and forth. Then when you're finishing in the abdominal region, you can just kind of slow it down. And the average pregnant woman is going to usually have no problem with you massaging the abdominal area. But again, it's always a good idea just to ask permission, of course. And you slowly stop it. And then whatever areas that you're not massaging, of course, you want to make sure you cover them up. And then when you're going to take out the breast drape, just make sure you just pull this out a little bit like this. Then you can cover them up like this. And then again, pull it out on this side. Now I'm going to hold on this side. Then just pull it out then. Now we'll go to the legs. Okay, now we're going to go into the leg area. And with this, you can just bring it over here like this and just do a little tuck. And make sure that they're, they're warm and comfortable. You can just check in with them, especially if you know that they're awake. You can ask these kind of things then for them. So again, we're going to start by getting a little bit of oil on the legs. And with her ankles, it's a good idea to look if there's any kind of swelling. Um, she just has a little bit of just mild swelling, if, if anything. But again, pitting edema, and us as massage therapists, we can't diagnose these things, so we can't say pitting edema or anything, but we can recommend them not to get a massage in certain areas. And what I've read, too, is pregnant women are four times more likely to have blood clots in their legs just because of poor circulation. And a big problem, too, with pregnancy is once they give birth, um, the pregnant women, they're not, they're not looking forward to, like, stretch marks and those kind of problems. So there's things that you can use, like cocoa butter oil or cocoa butter lotion and stuff um, that might help out. But again, there's no guarantees with those kind of things, but that's what some people will use with it. So again, we're going to start with this. And if you need to, you can even elevate the leg even more, so you can put it underneath another pillow underneath there to elevate it more if they do have any kind of swelling. So the more you can raise it kind of above the heart or right at the heart level, 
that's where it's going to help to drain everything down. So again, more pressure towards the heart. In pregnant women, especially in the end of the third trimester, it's going to be a little bit harder for them to shave their legs. So just be aware that you might feel a little bit of prickly sensations in that area. So again, more pressure towards the heart, less pressure away from the heart. And you can use even your forearms or your elbows a little bit in this area. And what I'd like to point out here is, right here she has a scar. She had surgery way back in the day. But with a scar, you can perform like a lot of like cross fiber friction. And I can even feel some scar tissue build up there, but the more cross fiber friction in that area, the better. And another technique that's really beneficial too is myofascial release. So I have another full video on just myofascial release techniques. And these areas that they can get to themselves, you can teach them techniques themselves. And again, cross fiber friction is usually the better technique. And slower the deeper, of course. And when you're going up, you can even kind of vibrate and kind of shimmy down. Another area to pay a little bit more attention, um, especially in the end of the third trimester, is right in the groin region and the adductors, because if they're going to be in the stirrups giving birth, that area is going to tense up a lot more. So that's the area we want to relax and massage more on a regular basis then. So what we're going to do with that one is we're going to bring over the knee, lift up the knee a little bit, and externally rotate. So we can get at this area. But as you can see here, she's not too flexible. So you might, if you want, you can ask permission. You can put your knee up on this area. So you can massage like this. Or you can get a pillow or a bolster and put it underneath there too. Or if they're comfortable like that, that's okay too. But again, this is the area you'd want to concentrate on a little bit more. But again, not really deep pressure but just enough to relax the muscles. And if you're going to perform any kind of stretches in this area, you just ask permission to cup the opposite side of the hip like this, then push down on the knee. So again, cup the opposite hip, and some people are ticklish, so you'd have their hand there, and then your hand on top to hold it. Then you can just stretch out that area then. And you can even perform like broadening techniques, kind of separating like this. But again, more pressure towards the heart, less pressure away, of course. And then when you're done with that area, just slowly bring it back, of course. Try not to hyperextend the knee, of course. And then you can kind of lift up, kind of glide down too. One of the best stretches for a pregnant woman, we want to stretch out the gastrocnemius and soleus region. What we're going to do for that one is I'm going to cup the calcaneus right here, hold here, and just kind of lean forward. So again, I'm going to cup here like this, 
and just lean forward, but I'm going to place my hand here and then lean forward like this. And then let me just show you from this, again, I wouldn't be on this side stretching it out, but just to show you a little bit easier. So compress and then stretch. Because you don't want to stretch it and then compress it. Then you're going to push too much in the knee region. But pregnant women in general, they have a lot of cramping in the calf region. And my wife, I mean, virtually every single night she woke up screaming. And the first time I hit that area, because that's what I do for when I have cramps, and I never did that again because I got to hit myself. So, <laughs> so with that one, again, we're going to compress and then stretch that area out. Or some people just like you just to squeeze that area too. So again, all depends on what they can handle for that pressure and to relieve that kind of cramping for that area. Okay, so for the foot region, again, we look to make sure that there's not a lot of swelling. And if there is a lot of swelling, uh, you can definitely refuse to massage an area, of course. But with the foot area, you can kind of, just going to go back and forth, going to stretch out. And try not to, in the right in the arch area, try not to stretch too abruptly there because that's a big area too that they can start cramping up for a pregnant woman. So just kind of go slow, do a nice little stretch. And you can even perform like reflexology tr um, treatment here or just a regular Swedish massage. But after you're done massaging the foot, make sure you wipe off the oil if you have any oil or if you're not, just um, use the lotion instead or just use nothing at all then. Because you don't want them to get up and walk around with oily feet. And they can slip and fall, of course. With the toes, you kind of separate, you gotta lift them up. Again, whenever you perform once, make sure you perform it a couple more times. It's kind of the law of the massage feel. You can even go in between the toes. And it's a good idea to look in between the toes to make sure there's no cracking at all before you perform that kind of technique. And pregnant women might be a little bit more self-conscious of their toes or their feet, especially if in the past they've um, taken really good care of their feet, but in the th end of the third trimester, they might get a little bit more pedicures because they can't reach that area as much sometimes. You can even perform a little bit of a shimmy. Make sure your head isn't too close to there so you don't get hit yourself. And you can even squeeze. And right around here for reflexology, that's the ovaries and uterus right around the ankles. It's okay to start stimulating that area once they're ready to give birth, once the doctor says it's okay, but otherwise it's okay to massage, but not to hold and, and stimulate those areas then, of course. And right at the heel area, you can even use your knuckles right at the heel too. Or again, just kind of like pray for pain in that area too. On the top of the foot for re reflexology base, that's the long chest and breast area, so it might be a little bit more tender. So just be aware of that. And you can perform just regular petrissage, kind of kneading techniques. If a pregnant woman has a job where they have to be on their feet all day long, this is probably the best area to massage for them. And 
And to finish it off, you can kind of light techniques. Try not to glide with your fingers on the bottom of the foot, especially if they're ticklish. On the top, it's probably okay. And again, when you're done, just cover them up and even massage them a little bit in that area. In pregnant women, there's another problem they can have here. It's called tarsal tunnel syndrome. It's where the posterior tibial nerve gets impinged. And it's just like carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's in the foot and where they can get numbness and tingling in the toe region and the foot region because of that then. So again, just like carpal tunnel syndrome up in the wrist, but there's a tarsal tunnel syndrome that can develop too. Or they could have sciatic problems where right in the glute region or even the lower back where the sciatic nerve um, can be impinged and they can get tingling down the leg too. So that's another thing to be aware of for, um, for a pregnant woman. Then. Well, for a sideline abdominal area, as you can see here, Right here is the pillow, so it's covering up the breast tissue, and then we've got the sheet covering up the pelvic region, of course. And you can even go like this. And if you need to, just ask permission to put your knee up on the table so it's a little bit more comfortable for you. If the belly's hanging down too much, what you can do is even put like a half bolster or uh, towel underneath this area just to raise it up a little bit. And this way you can really get into the rib area or even if they're having a little bit of lower back problems the quadriceborum right here you can really nicely get into that area or even to the side. And you can even perform a little bit of a stretch. So you can hook the iliac crest here and kind of kind of glide up. Or you can even just hold it too if you want to stretch. So if they're having any kind of side problems. And this can even be used for the average person too, the sideline position. So you can get at these areas a little bit easier. with the domino you can just kind of pull it up or you can go one hand on one side one on the other kind of lift it up and earlier I talked about using cocoa butter lotion and you can even use some of that to massage during this time too but again, ask permission because sometimes with scents, sometimes that can trigger um, them being nauseous or them wanting to throw up any kind of scents. For my wife, um, when she first got her prenatal pills, um, she hated them because they smelled kind of like vanilla and she started gagging right away whenever she took those. So we had to make sure we got a different batch the next time around. So again, any kind of little smells and for her pregnancy, she, she actually threw up and was nauseous the whole pregnancy. So in general, it's a first trimester for motion sickness, kind of, um, that kind of problems. But again, not every, everybody has it throughout, but some people will have it more in the mornings, other ones more in the afternoons. But again, it's called morning sickness, but don't let that fool you at all. And you can even perform like an ocean wave or in the abdominal region too. Even kind of a crisscross. One hand going one way, the other one going the other way. And you can perform hand underneath. So you can get right at the quadriceborum, of course. Or even use your forearm a little bit in this area. Some petrissage.
and massage is actually good for a pregnant woman too, so it helps regain the lacticin. So it helps everything form a little bit better too. And the biggest area that they're going to have stretch marks if they do is the abdominal region. So you can ask permission to just perform a little bit lower abdominal. And again, most of the time when you're massaging the abdominal region, the baby's going to fall asleep. So you don't have to worry about the baby kicking you at all. And if you need to, you can just place your hands on them for a little bit just to see if the baby is awake or if the baby's a little bit awake this sometimes might calm them down a little bit just got kicked a little bit there okay so that concludes this area now we're going to go to the back area when she's laying on her side. So for the side lying position, as you can see, harder for the average massage therapist if you're not trained in this kind of position. But for the geriatric, for the pregnancy, or even for the average person, you can massage them in this kind of position. And it's beneficial because you can get into the rotator cuff muscles really nice this way. Or even for sciatic problems, you can get in there too or just basically any area. Um, it's just another option. If you can't get at it in the prone or supine position, try in sideline position. So it's totally okay for a person to be in this kind of position. Then. Okay, we're going to start. You can kind of go glide down. And the back is centrally located. So you can go in any kind of position or direction that you want in the back position. We're going to go down. You can even perform a little bit of figure eight. We're going to glide down. And if you want any kind of a stretch, you can kind of hook the iliac crest here and kind of glide up. So again, hook, kind of glide. And if they're having low back problems, right here, the quadriceborum, that's where you can really concentrate on a lot more because, again, the baby's kind of falling to the side, so you're not pushing on the baby then. So if they are in the um, prone position or the semi-reclined position, it's going to be a little bit harder, but this is the best area to get at it for if they want a little bit more deeper pressure on the lower back area. You can even kind of go kind of slow and deep, but don't go into the vertebrae, of course. So you can kind of feel that muscle mass a little bit right there. That's the muscle you're going after is the quadrus laborum. A lot of people just say QL. And these rectors right here, too. You can concentrate on there, too, but you can feel kind of a rope. You can kind of push but not over them, of course, but just kind of into them. And pregnant women tend to have a little bit more lordosis problems, so a little bit too much curve in the lumbar region, the way they're walking. So this is the area that you want to concentrate on a lot more, is the lower lumbar, right in this area. And you can even put your hand underneath there and use more of their body weight if you want any more kind of pressure. And you can just rest your arm on them, as you can see here. So I'm just stabilizing, make sure I'm not going to push them over, of course. You can use your knuckles a little bit in that area. And for pregnant women, if they are having, um, especially in the end of third trimester, 
their breasts tend to get a lot larger, so they might have more problems in the upper shoulder and neck region. So this is the area you want to concentrate on too then. So for this one, you can kind of just hold and kind of glide around, right around the rhomboids, right around the vertebra border of the scapula here. So right around here, that's where we're going to concentrate on more for a pregnant woman. And again, I was talking earlier about with rotator cuff problems, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and even the subscapularis we can get into in these areas. And for this area, if we're going to get into the rotator cuff area, always make sure that their bottom hand is holding on to the pillow. And you can even take the top hand and kind of move it around. Or this is an option I really like to have. Just place their hand right on your shoulder, like this, and just make sure they're holding on a little bit, but it's a nice, comfortable position for this area. And you can get right into the serratus anterior, and if they feel like they have a stitch in their side, really tight in this area, that's the area we're going to concentrate on more, is the serratus anterior. And especially any, any times they're having problems with breathing, serratus anterior you might want to check on, also the scaling muscles up in the neck area, you'd want to check on those areas. But any muscles that attach to the rib are considered breathing muscles. If a woman's having a hard time kind of lifting up their arm, the subscapularis muscle we might, might want to concentrate on a little bit. So what we're going to do with that one is we're going to kind of pinch, and right where my thumb is, that's where we're going to kind of slide into there. But just make sure if you feel a pulse, don't push in there at all. It's, I'm trying to ride the anterior part of the scapula is what I'm trying to do. So this is the posterior, the anterior part you can't feel. So I'm just trying to ride the posterior part of the ribs. So here I'm, my hands are basically trying to go around like this. Or if you want just to play it safe, you can kind of just pinch this area too. And you can kind of lift the arm up like this, and you can even have them kind of rest and just do a little bit of a stretch. And you can have them do a little bit of a stretch too. So place their hand here. And if you're going to stretch out the pec area. So I'm going to hold right at the scapula. And then the elbow right here, I'm going to bring it this way towards me. So I'm going to stretch out that area then, okay? Or if they want a different kind of stretch, you can just kind of pull. And you can even pull and kind of rotate and, and twist. So it's called tractioning. Okay, another option for the back, as you can see here, I got the, her one hand is right here, holding under the pillow still. The other hand is over here. And you can even have them kind of rest against you. And you can get at the whole back area this way. And this way is your, your whole body is kind of resting against the pillow. So it's not invasive at all. You can even perform some petrissage techniques, or you can even get into the neck area too. Or, going to lift it up. And with this, for your own body, just make sure you're performing it nice and slow and even do a little twist every now and then. Because anytime you feel your body is a little bit off whack, you want to make sure you perform a little bit slow so you're getting kind of a stretch for your own self. But as you can see, they're not really telling, they're not really knowing that it's, I'm actually performing this, but it's more for my benefit too. And right here, the quadrus of of course, 
can kind of push into those areas. But it just makes it a nice comfortable position like this. But sometimes it's hard to massage the back when you're on that side, when the sideline position. Okay, then another option, you can be at the head here. And you can get in right in the shoulders. But just make sure their shoulder is not rotated over too much. Make sure it's straight up and down as much as it can be. And their head, make sure that's kind of straight too. Because if their head is too cranked up or too low, I mean that's when they're going to start developing problems. And right here you can use your knuckles, get into the neck area really nice, and even the sternocleidomastoid, even the scalenes area, or levator scapula. Again, everything's right there for you. And every now and then, if you know that they're awake, ask them, do you feel comfortable in this position or do you need to move in a different position at all? So leave it up to them. And some therapists will book even an hour and a half for a pregnancy massage just because it takes a little bit extra time and if you want to be more skilled in it. And again, with a pregnant woman, if they need to use the restroom more, But a lot of the Swedish techniques you already know, try to perform in, in this kind of position. But make sure you're not leaning over so much. Make sure you're moving with the techniques as much as you can. And you can use even your forearms in this area too. You can even bring it down, but again, I'm not going over the vertebrae at all. I'm stopping just before the vertebrae. Or you can bring it down like here like this. But whatever you perform on one side of the body, again, you're going to have them flip over to the other side, so it's a little bit easier to get the other side of the back than this way. And you can even kind of go underneath. Again, right at the QL. Now, the option for the gluteal region. So, we're going to just totally cover this area up. And what you want to do is you want to feel the greater trochanter. So, the greater trochanter is the head of the femur, the ball and socket joint, and that's you can just kind of use your palm, kind of like circular friction. And this is the area for like the sciatic problems. So that's why you can even kind of hook onto the iliac crest here and kind of push into the glute region because you don't want to push into them like this. So you want to have that little bit of barrier. So you, again, you're going to kind of hook and push. And you can just kind of walk or you can kind of twist. Again, you don't want to put, put pressure on any bony areas, so that's why you're going to find those areas beforehand. And kind of like circular friction. And if you want to expose any of the glute at all, you can just expose a little bit of like the lower glute area like this, and just kind of tuck it in. So if you need to, you can perform even kind of gliding the lower body like this. And again, find, find where the greater trochanter is. And it's a good idea to just to look at those areas beforehand to make sure there's no bruises because if there are bruises you can let them know did you know you had a bruise there so you're not going to get blamed for 
for those areas then. Okay, now I'm going to go to the leg. So I'm going to go like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the knee a little bit and just do like a Roman drape here. So I just did a Roman drape like this. And if I want to get into more of the gluteal region this way, that's the way I'm going to get into there. So you can see here, that's where for the glute. And you can even kind of glide and do some techniques that way too then. But again, I just did a Roman drape, so I just kind of pulled it underneath. So they're, they're not going to get any air at all. And it's just a lot more like compression techniques. So again, you're just compressing. I'm going to add some oil. Again, with the pressure, you want to make sure you're going towards the heart with more pressure, of course. And there's a gluteus minimus trigger points that can mimic sciatic problems. So it's right around the greater trochanter. That's where you want to concentrate on. So see if it's mimicking the kind of problems that they might be having. And there's also another problem. It's called pelvic pain. So in the like fourth, um, fourth month or so, it's when the pelvic bone starts to expand and it kind of mimics sciatic problems. So that's the area you might want to concentrate on a little bit too, is this area. And the sacrum too, if they're having any kind of cramps. So you can kind of push into the sacrum area. But make sure you're not pushing on the coccyx, of course. Make sure you know where that is. The coccyx, the tailbone. And then with this, you can just bring this over here a little bit more, make sure it's more straight. But again, we're performing the techniques on this leg, but when you flip them over the other side, then you're going to perform the same techniques on the other leg then. And you can't even perform dorsiflexion to stretch that area out too. For the calf area, so you remember that's a big area for them to have cramping. And you can kind of go like this. You can feel the pronius muscles, the one that's mostly lateral here. You kind of glide over it. Or right here, the tensor fascia lata, or a lot of people will just say TFL. So it depends how they're walking too. So this area might be really having a lot of problems because it's rotated out more and this muscle is more contracted. And again, it's a little bit of muscle and it's mostly tendon. So that iliotibial band, the IT band right here, so again, the TFL is just a small part of the muscle, but it connects into the IT band. That's the area you might want to stretch out a little bit or relax it a little bit in those areas then. And you can even perform some light gliding techniques once you're done. Again, these light nerve techniques are just letting you know that it's I'm done in this area, it's time to go on another area. Whenever you're done, make sure you cover them up. Okay, for this position, as you can see, she's sitting on the edge of the table. And she's holding onto a pillow here. 
and then I got it draped around here and I'm only going to be massaging these areas of course so whatever areas are exposed that's the areas you're going to be massaging and with this it's kind of like chair massage in a way so with my chair massage video you can kind of have an idea of some of the techniques but this is the options too you can't get in here and you can even use more of your forearms even so you can get right around the shoulders so this is more of a last option if they they didn't like the sideline position or the semi-reclined position it's just another option you can put them in and you can still get paid with this one we're going to just kind of go down with the knuckles I'm not pushing into them a lot but if you want to push into them I'm going to pull the shoulder a little bit towards me and push in with the knuckles so this way you can add a lot of deep pressure this way and again this can be used for the average public it doesn't have to be just for pregnancy Perform some broadening or cross-handed. If you need a little break, you can kind of sit on the edge of the table. Just make sure that they're okay with it. You can use even use your forearms a little bit. Again, you want to check in with them without pressure. Pressure being good. Mm -hmm. And you can even come over here and get at the shoulder area this way. So again, this is not a common position, but it's just another position and just in case they don't feel comfortable in another position or you have some extra time you can even go both like this but just try not to be totally in front of them just come to the side a little bit you can even use your knuckles pushing into the quadriceborum of course and both at the same time even. And you can go in other areas of course. And you can perform a little bit like acupressure, just kind of go up and down. But again, if you're pushing too much into them, just kind of pull and push at the same time. If you need to, you can perform a little bit of a stretch to pull it down. You can kind of glide down. And with part of my arm, I'm using that doesn't have a lot of oil in it, so I'm not going to get oil in there here. I'm just perform it, pull it this way. Make sure you even out what both sides. And you can even perform a little bit of tapotment. So again, this is a homemade kind of chair massage, and it's not putting any stress on the baby area. And if they do have any kind of swelling, it's a good idea to have them raise up their legs. So you can have a stool there. There's many areas you can concentrate on a lot longer and a little bit deeper work if you need to.
And then when you're done, you can cover them up and then kind of massage them with the sheet then to absorb the oil. In. So again, this is another option. You can have them. Um, I, she's holding onto a pillow here and then she's sitting on a chair, but I have the chair, the back right here, so you can access this area a lot easier. Or ideally, if you didn't have a back at all, it would be a lot better. But if you have a stool that rolls, probably not a good idea for a pregnant woman. But as you can see here, it might even be a little bit easier instead of having them sit on the edge of the table. They might feel a little bit more secure in this kind of position. So again, this is just like chair massage. And again, the average per person can be in this position. So you can have the back exposed in this way. And a lot of the techniques you use for Swedish incorporate into this position then. You're not going to burn yourself out like a regular chair massage. So again, regular chair massage, a lot of compression, but you can actually use some gliding in this way too. You can kind of go over with your forearms. You can even use your forearms across the vertebrae as long as more the flat side, the flexor side. And make sure you're bending at your knees using proper body mechanics. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but again, regular chair massage, you can concentrate on this area. And you can even kind of walk the body too with the knuckles or even with your forearms, walk the body. And make sure that the, they're holding on to the pillow. You can even have a couple pillows there they can be hugging on to too. And look right along the vertebrae, of course. And you can even perform some vibration or rocking techniques right at the neck area as you can see it's so easy to get at and right at the lower body you can use knuckles kind of pushing into the QL Okay, for this position, this is only ideal probably for the second trimester and maybe a little bit of the third trimester or whatever they can feel comfortable with. But for this, um, as you can see here, it's the body cushion and there's an indent here. And remember the body cushion has a little bit of indent, so their abdominal region is kind of sinking into that area. So only whatever they can handle. So if it's not comfortable for them, of course, put them in a different position. So uh, most of the time, again, you want to spend in the semi-reclined position and sideline position. So. But with this one, all the different kind of techniques that you use for Swedish, it's right there for you. So it gives you a little bit of a break. But they do make pregnancy massage tables. And with the pregnancy massage tables, the abdominal area is kind of cut out and also the breast area is cut out too. But I know some books do not recommend that at all because it's the, um, the baby is hanging too much that way. So again, it all depends on what your belief is and also the comfort of the mother and comfort of the baby, of course. But I myself, I prefer just these body cushions um, just to be safe then. So again, all the techniques that you already know for regular Swedish or deep tissue and stuff, you can incorporate in this kind of position. And just try not to push straight down, of course, in the, in the lower lumbar region. You can kind of push it at an angle. And this area, you can really, you can even kind of cup 
the sacrum area and kind of squeeze it if they're having any kind of cramps. And again, for a pregnant woman, they tend to have a lot of lower, lower back issues because again, we can't diagnose, but if they have too much of a curve in the lumbar region, um, that's going to put a lot of stress in that area because the baby's kind of pulling in it um, in that direction. Then. And if you know that they're awake, check with them every now and then. What's the what's the what's the feel like? Do they need less pressure, more pressure, or if they need to move to a different position? And ideally, what you want to do is ask them to ask their doctor or midwife, um, is it okay to be in certain kind of positions? So it kind of takes off all the responsibility yourself and puts it on them to make sure that they're okay with these kind of positions so, so they can ask the, the, their doctor or midwife. And kind of the trend nowadays is to have a midwife, but if they are high risk, more likely they're going to have a doctor then. But smaller towns, they typically will have um, doctors even if they aren't high risk. But again, it all depends on the hospital and what kind of rules and regulations they have with that there. As you can see here, you can really get into the shoulder area, of course. And it's a little hard to get kind of in the abdominal region with a body cushion, but it is possible. And again, some people just feel more comfortable in this kind of position with a body cushion, even a regular person. So I know some therapists, they use this body cushion for everybody. Again, when you're done, just cover them up and make sure you massage those areas to absorb the oil, especially areas that they can't reach. That concludes the pregnancy massage video. So for more information, um, if you want to check out for pregnancy massage, please go to www.massagenerd.com. And kind of my rules and guidelines is, if in doubt, refer it out. So if you have any questions with anything with a pregnant woman, make sure you ask them and then ultimately have them ask the doctor just to be safe because again, you never know, more than likely you're not gonna cause any problems, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. Because again, if they are high risk, definitely make sure you get doctor's permission and make sure you have them sign a waiver or make sure it's okay to um, give them a massage then. So that's my advice and thanks for watching.